people that have uh, traveled to be here, but uh, I think everybody kind of got their money's worth. How many guys think uh, they got something out from today? I was, uh, I was kind of making a joke earlier where I was just like, uh, if everybody thought that they got their money worth, they should have left and everybody would have left you know, in the first 10 minutes because that's really why we're here. And uh, the whole point is for us to, to, uh, to be here because let me, let me go back. The whole point that I'm here is my personal uh, strategy for be better retention. The reason I bring that up is that everybody, anybody been trained for martial arts for five years, 10 years, 15 years? You guys remember the first time you're here? First, first uh, train? How many of the guys that trained with you as a white belt or as a beginner still train? W is, isn't that a shame? That all those people that you, you spent five years, 10 years, 15, 20, for me, 29 years, all those guys are not around. I don't have the real reason why that is. Everybody can have a speculation of why that is. But the whole thing is, was there something wrong when they came in, when they signed up, when they took their first year of training, that all of a sudden they said, you know what, I don't think I want to do this anymore. And we, you have that old saying, you know, would you trade in all of your martial arts experience? Would you get rid of it for any price of money? And the whole thing is a lot of us wouldn't because this is our experience. So the whole thing is for us, <coughs> and I'm glad that uh, some of the, the presenters before pre-framed pre it because we know what's in store for our students. We just have to set them up properly to be willing to receive it. Does that make sense? It's always a point for us to be at the right place, but to get the wrong information, and then everybody assumes what's supposed to come next. Our job is to fill in those blanks so that they will stay on as long as we have, because you don't have to be a UFC fighter, you don't have to be um, an instructor, you could just be a lifetime career student. And if that was the case, we're pretty much done. You know, we don't have to keep trying to get more students in because these other people are not leaving. So I think that's where, as far as my, my uh, personal opinion is concerned, where I'm going with this. Uh, I am by far uh, not perfect in understanding how this whole game works. I am a student. So as I look at it as a student, I always tell people, would I do it myself? Anything that happens within my school, whether it's what I read on Facebook, a video that I've seen, the way um, I would have called my own school. Would that, is that acceptable for me to join? And if that's the case, because we're the crazy ones, guys. You know why? Because however you came in the system wasn't perfect back then. But we're the only guys that actually stayed. That makes us kind of crazy. Everybody else did something else, whether they got a different kind of job, they were um, told about what was better to be able to keep them fit or motivated or something else like that. Just like a uh, professor said, who left? and somehow they got more peace of mind. Who left and suddenly their circle of friends are the friends that you would have your kids hang out with? I know who I want my kid to hang out with, okay? I'm nervous because my daughter's in the back. Okay, <clears throat> so as far as, uh, I don't know if everybody can read this, in the top is saying, can we agree on what's happening in the martial arts space? Traditional single martial arts floor is suffering from the economy. The reason is, whatever your single martial art is, somebody is assuming what that art is all about, unless we give them proper information. I don't care if it's traditional karate. There's tremendous things about that, but the thing is, what is their assumption of it? Is their, is their assumption breaking a board, or is it about the values? If you're gonna do jujitsu, is it about somebody getting choked out, or is it about having the control? You guys understand where we're going with this? So as we start to do this, there's rapid growth and interest in MMA, but who's watching MMA, and what's their idea of what training MMA is? It is what we tell people it is, or it could be what's on uh, edit this later on Ultimate Fighter, right? Is that what MMA is, or is there a tremendous amount of people practicing MMA and getting the right idea from it? Because it's just different arts coming together. Who runs that? You do, you're the instructors. You get to dictate the barometer of what that's supposed to be, regardless of what it's called. MMA schools are on the rise because, and that's the whole point, you guys have the power to dictate that, or you can choose to not get on a platform and talk about it. Uh, the challenge for the single instructor is staff development. I think everybody can agree that. How do I replicate myself? I, I was speaking to someone in the back and I'm saying, well, what is it that you do? Shh, that's a lot, I can't tell you. Well, then how do you train someone if you can't explain it to me? How do you get somebody else to do that too? So at least define that first. Uh, what I hope to do is give you some sort of blueprint for customer acquisition, not on a tech sense, but just more of a con uh, concept and idea sense. 
and to understand what I define as a progressive rank system, which should equal to retention. Like I said, if we can get everybody to just have a prescription to our beliefs, why would anyone leave? Even if they're just a casual student, right? Unless, you, and th the whole thing goes back to your curriculum. If your curriculum dictates that you have to do a backflip cartwheel into a flaming brick, yeah, they're probably gonna leave. Um, See, I'm not laughing because I actually know of a school who shall remain nameless, and they involve cartwheels into a break as a requirement for their belt rank. Somebody should tell them, right? Uh, class management, planner, and structure all working together because the way I believe it is um, it doesn't matter what curriculum you have, you have to know what they're selling so that it coincides with what's on the mat, so therefore that student feels like that they're getting what they originally paid for. So that's the whole cycle. So um, I think John Mallet, when he says, you know, it's not just the curriculum, it's how everything kind of melts together because it's true. So when we go into uh, the next slides, you're gonna see what I'm talking about. So when we talk about the two most important issues is what, why do students quit, what are you selling, and are they clear about what they're buying? That's the whole point. You can go to Target and you could say, there's an ad that says this TV is so-and-so. Everybody would be online to return it if they found one thing off on what they got from what was advertised. So we have to be very careful on how we brand ourselves. Uh, number two is what is your upgrade strategy? Um, a lot of people say they have an enrollment strategy. A lot of people say they have an upgrade strategy. That's great. I'm not here to say mine is better. In fact, after this is done, I'd love to be able to hear yours so that we can always keep innovating the things that we're doing. The things that we're doing this year is not the same things that we did last year. So that's why I like Champions Way because as a company, as far as technology, they never stay stagnant. As martial artists, we should never stay stagnant. Uh, if you are a martial artist who said, I got my black belt 20 years ago, and I, so therefore I've been training for 40 years now. And no, you, some martial artists, they train for five years and they've just been repeating stuff over and over again. They've not tried to do anything new. I'm not calling anybody out. I'm just saying, don't be that guy. And it's really easy to have that transparency and somebody says, no, you just keep doing the same old thing over and over again. Even if you do something wrong, by doing something will let you know from the failures that you have, as we said, will make you better. So don't be scared to be able to do that. So why do students quit? I'm gonna go through a quick bullet point um, syllabus in the front. Marketing review, what is your messaging before the enrollment? What is your messaging during the trial and intro? What is your messaging during the beginner's course? Let's say that that's your first year program, which I'm gonna get into more detail. And why should they upgrade after a beginner's course, okay? So the whole point is at the bottom is consistency with the messages curriculum has to be there starting from when? What's day one? When they first saw you on the website or the ad. Because the ad has to be consistent from what they expect when they walk in the door. So you gotta go back further. So, okay, this is not me, and so it's not me, right? This is how new students view your school. So if you're saying you're the family fun school and your, your uh, curriculum is set in a certain way, can you imagine this? Okay, they came in, they were white belt, then became a yellow, and all of a sudden, you're doing an awesome job, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, come on in, right? You should upgrade so that you could become a champion. All of a sudden, you sell them sparring gear. At what point were they clear that by becoming a black belt or doing this or doing that, they were supposed to get kicked in the head as a requirement? At what point were they supposed to break a flaming brick? At what point, do you guys understand where I'm going with this? At what point did they learn it? Did they learn it after they already took their intermediate test and they had to do it? Of course they were supposed to do it. Didn't you see the pro shop display? Or were they told about this ahead of time by their goal setting and find out was that what they really intended on getting when they first came in? So we're talking about having high percentage students that came in, knew what they wanted, and they're willing to stay because they're, they're, uh, you're willing to take them there as opposed to, I got all these leads, then I got all these signups, but I can't close the back door and you don't know why and did you ever survey them to find out what is it exactly that you wanted? Well, I wanted confidence. Well, breaking a brick is confidence. You, get, you guys understand that? There are, there are so many people that you could follow through philosophy, through um, great blogs that are out there that can develop confidence. Right? You're gonna make the four-year-old go into a horse dance. Nothing wrong with that, per se. But then you ask certain people, why are you making them do that? Well, it's discipline, they gotta do that. Well, can they support? All I'm trying to say is research question. Because when I came up, growing, growing up, I say growing up, but when I was a younger student, I wasn't allowed to question, we just did it. 
That's cool. That's okay. But the le- you have all these great people up here, and the last thing they say before they walk off, anybody have any questions? Because you're allowed to call us out. Whatever we say does not have to be written in stone. We can modify it. Great question. This is how I would answer it. How would you answer it? Let's challenge ourselves and then innovate our schools every single time because we don't know who the person who walks into our school tomorrow is. In the Karate Kid days, nobody expected those kids to come in at all. There was, if you joined karate back in the day, theoretically, you know the type of guy who walked in there. They were kind of a tough guy that knew what it was all about. Let's bare knuckle it and take it in the chest and this and that. And then it wasn't that guy. And then we had to adjust, and then we had to keep moving. You guys understand where I'm going with that? So what our presentation, to upgrade them a year later, two years later, three years later, wasn't from when they walked in the door, wasn't from when they called, it was from when you first branded yourself as the type of school that you were. Does that make sense? And be consistent all the way through. So you have your websites, which could be your static website, your mobile site, uh, website, it could be your Facebook fan page. Okay. Uh, is your criteria is anybody who could join as long as they paid the first tuition? Is that really it? Right? So when you come in and you say, hey, I want a certain kind of people to come to my school. I don't want to be misrepresented. Oh, I hate when those guys show up. Well, why are they showing up? Because somewhere, maybe there was a mixed message going on. Maybe there is a student that you don't know about that hangs out and talks too much. Like as, uh, as they were saying, somebody could be in the car, you know, pumping their fist out and then they have your logo in the back and they think that's what your school's like. You don't know that. Yeah, you do. You can do a little research, check out what they're posting. So I'm talking here as a blessing because I'm very thankful that I get a chance to have this forum, but it's a curse because I, I'm speaking after all these great speakers. I, you can't, I first thought I was speaking in the morning. I was like, oh man, I'm going to talk after Sensei Ned. Okay, what is that? Oh, John, Mal- oh man, he knows his stuff. Oh, professor, what am I going to say after professor? So that's my curse. You guys understand what I'm saying that? So I'm trying to step up the game right now and be like, all right, you know what? I'm going to talk about something that I like talking about right now.